Hey guys, this is Civil Learning Online and this is 10th lecture on project management. In this video, I am going to discuss about CPM network, different kinds of float, time estimates which are used in CPM network and if you are enjoying the content on Civil Learning on Online channel and do not want to miss any updates then do subscribe the channel and without any further delay, let's get started. So guys, let's begin our today's lecture. This lecture is very important because in this lecture we are going to learn about the basic concept of CPM network, uh, different types of time estimates which are used in CPM network which are basically designed for drawing CPM network, What are in what case we use CPM network as well as CPM process and finally we will uh, talk about uh, the different types of floats which are used in uh, CPM network which are necessary to distinguish the uh, critical path, critical activity finally which leads to critical activity. So first of all here I have picked out some points which are which will be introduction of the CPM network and the first thing is CPM network stands for critical path method. See, as we, this is the full form of CPM network which is critical path method, CPM is critical path method. Second thing is it was invented by DuPont and C. Rand Corporation in 1957 for application to industrial situation like construction, manufacturing, maintenance, etc. So this point is very simple, it was invented by DuPont and Sperry Rand Corporation in 1957 and basically its use was at that time it was designed or invented for the following purposes for construction, manufacturing, maintenance, etc. And the third point is CPM networks are generally activity oriented. This thing I have mentioned previously also that CPM networks are activity oriented. And the fourth point says that in activity oriented network, the arrow presenting activities or jobs are labeled with some description of activity. means. Uh, uh, whenever we are drawing the activity oriented network means the CPM network, the, acti the arrows representing activity as we all know that uh, in a network activity are represented by an arrow suppose this is event, this is our tail event and this is head event then uh, and this, if we enumerate this event as 1 and 2 then our activity is going to be 1 to 2 and we have some description about this activity this is what this point is saying. Now, it says that activities are usually operations which uh, takes time to carry out and on which resources are expended. Activities are actions which require both time and resources to uh, complete that activity. And the second last point is in CPM network, each activity is represented by an arrow and the sequence in which these activities are performed is shown by the sequence of the arrow. If uh, let me elaborate it to you, suppose this is our uh, first activity, 1 to 2 is our first activity and here we have some other activities that is event 3 and event 4 and finally they meet up at uh, a new event that is 5 and the head event be 6. So here we have different activities, activities are 1 to 2, 2 to 4. 4 to 5 similarly 2 to 3 2 to 5 and 5 to 6 so here uh, activities these activities are represented by arrow these 1 to 2 represents an activity and uh, these activity are performed in a sequence means we have to perform this activity in a sequence we cannot perform this 2 to 4 activity before completing our activity 1 to 2 that is what the line is point this point is saying and the fifth or the last point is CPM network are generally used for repetitive type project or for this project for which fairly accurate estimate of time for completion of each activity can be made means here the points that are to be kept in mind is uh, fairly accurate estimate of time for completion of each activity can be made for which cost estimation cost estimation can be made with fair degree of accuracy so here in cpm network cpm network in cpm network what happens time is related 
related to cost so this is what the point is dealing with fairly accurate time estimate is required in that case we use cpm network second thing is for which accurate cost estimation can be made for any activity if we are able to make uh, accurate cost estimation in that case we use cpm network this was the introduction of cpm network and let's move to the further of, uh, of this topic so here comes cpm process means uh, uh, what are the application of cpm purpose process or how we perform cpm in what steps so cpm has several level of application in a project management namely they are planning scheduling and controlling the first of all we will deal about planning what is planning and uh, where it is used how we perform planning of the cpm process so the planning is the most important of project management in which the logical sequence in which the jobs and activity must be performed is formalized means before carrying out any activity first of all what we need to do we have to formalize different uh, activities in the nature of their importance or uh, what activities are to be performed before carrying out the succeeding activity that is called planning means we before carrying out any activity we have to first prepare a plan that step is called planning so and the second point is it should be ascertained that all the activities are shown and the scope of the project has been interpreted correctly and also the resources that are required for performing its jobs are applied means uh, there should be uh, if, uh, when we are planning about uh, the completion of any activity then uh, there should be sufficient resources and we should have the prior idea about what kind of resources are required to perform that activity and whether the availability of those resources are uh, at, at the site or not scheduling scheduling is the determination of time required for execution of each operation and the time order in which each operation has to be carried out to meet the plan objective scheduling means the time required for execution of each operation and the time order in which operation has to be carried out means uh, in what time we have to complete we have to start that activity and in what time that activity should be completed so that our our project objective is completed that thing is called scheduling scheduling has also to to be done not only to respect of in respect not only in respect of operation but also in respect of resources means scheduling should be done in terms of resources also not only in respect of operation means which operation is to be performed before and after that in not only in that case but also in terms of resources so that we won't face any kind of a deficiency once our activity has started of resources so the final point is controlling controlling is the process in which difference or deviations between the plan and actual performance are reviewed after the project has started so controlling is basically uh the checking or uh, analyzing whether the our project or the activities are performed as per our plan or not that thing is called controlling in cpm controlling is required not only in respect of physical progress of the work but also in respect of cost as i already told you cpm is all about uh cost and time so uh here uh, we we would not only focus on the physical progress of the work means how what portion of the job is performed or not but also in respect of cost so that uh, we we our project won't be expensive or it does not exceed the uh, contracted amount uh, when the activities ha has started one must have knowledge about different start and finish time of the activity which is basically you mainly used in the cpm network so first thing is in cpm network the flowing activities times are useful for the network computation uh, one you may have a numerical in exam about the computation of the cpm network so it is necessary to learn about this time estimate so that you won't have any kind of confusion so first time estimate is earliest start time earliest finish time latest start time latest finish time and we are going to re learn about this time uh in detail one by one so first a uh, first one is the earliest start time the earliest start time of an activity is the earliest time by which it can commence means the earliest start time is uh similar to the earliest expected time of the 
uh, CPM or sorry port network and uh, here in is, uh, the same thing is called as earliest start time in CPM network and the second thing is this is naturally equal to the earliest event time that is associated with the tail of the activity arrow means uh, um, this earliest start time will be equal to the earliest event time of the tail event tail event uh, means the tail of the activity arrow suppose this is our activity arrow 1 to 2 and this is tail so it is equivalent it is earliest start time is going to be uh, the time allocated with this tail event of tail tail of this activity 1 to 2 means uh, suppose this is beginning of this activity so our earliest start time is going to be t e equals to 0 or, th or sorry we will write e s t equals to 0 or t e equals to 0 the same that is same thing uh, and the third point says that uh, e s t is denoted by t e i means the tail event time if the activity is denoted by i to j and if the earliest event time at its tail is t e i so that is going to be equal if the event times the, this line is saying that suppose the uh, earliest time of this tail event 1 to 2 is t e i then and this activity is i to j i to j then we will have t e i equals to e s t means earliest start time will be equal to t e i of this tail event 1 to 2 i hope this point is clear to you and the now the second thing is earliest finish time earliest finish time it is defined as the earliest time by which an activity can be finished means uh, it is equal to the time by which an activity can be finished it is evidently equal to the earliest start time plus the estimated duration of the activity e earliest finish time equals to earliest start time means tei plus duration duration suppose we are calculating the earliest finish time of this activity 1 to 2 or i to j then te earliest finish time eft eft will be equals to tei means earliest start time of this initial event sorry activity 1 to 2 so 1 tei plus ti j ti j is duration of this activity 1 to 2 so this is what the formula is saying now here comes the third that is latest start time so here it is latest start time that is denoted by lst latest start time for an activity is the latest time by which an activity can be started without delaying the completion of the project for no delay condition to be fulfilled it should be naturally equal to the latest finish time minus the activity duration and here lst equals to lft means latest finish time minus activity duration that so we denote latest finish time as tlj minus duration activity uh, so that our activity should not uh, our completion of the project is not delayed if uh, we are starting some activity late that time is called the latest start time and the fourth point is latest finish time the latest finish time for an activity is the latest time by which an activity can be finished without delaying the completion of the project means it is the latest time in which the activity can be started but uh, the project won't be late naturally the latest finish time of an activity will be equal to the latest allowable occurrence time for the event at the head of the arrow means uh, latest finish time is going to be head of the event this is our head so latest finish time is going to be suppose this is i to j activity so latest finish time is going to be t l j means uh, this is naturally equal to this latest finish time is naturally equal to this portion and uh, this is what the line is saying that latest finish time for an activity will be equal to the latest allowable occurrence time for the event at the head of the arrow now uh, we will need to learn about different kinds of float so here we go so in order to solve the compute the cpm network one must have knowledge about different kinds of float and while solving the numerical one must know the formula for uh, solving that uh, network cpm network 
So here we go. Float denotes the range between which an activity start time and its finish time may fluctuate. Means it is the portion of time in which the start and finish time can uh, vary without affecting the completion of the project. During that time, the completion of the project is not affected. So the different types of float are total float, free float, independent float, and interfering float. First thing is total float. And uh, guys, we that you should know is uh, the different types of float name, their definition and formula. And that thing is sufficient in order to solve any kind of numerical and for exam point of view also. So total float is the time span by which the starting or finishing of an activity can be delayed without delaying the completion of the project. Means it is the time within which uh, the start and finish time can be delayed, but the project uh, duration completion time is not delayed means project is not late uh, completed uh, does not exceed the scheduled time in certain activity it will be found that there is a difference between maximum time available and the actual time required to perform that activity this time difference is known as total float what is it saying that it is difference between the maximum time available and the actual time required that thing is called the total float so total float equals to time available minus time required and we need to remember the formula so here you can remember this formula for the total float which is used when we are computing the cpm network so now we will talk about the free float so uh, here we will first discuss about the free float definition and then the formula the free float is that portion of positive total float means it is the portion of total total float positive total float that can be used by an activity without delaying any succeeding activity what is saying succeeding activity it must not affect the succeeding activity or without affecting the total float of the succeeding activity that is what i already told you the concept of the free float is based upon the possibility that all the event occur at their earliest time means uh, it is the portion of time which uh, depends on that concept that each and every event must occur at their earliest time earliest time that is all activity starts as early as possible that time is called free float and the formula for the free float is here i have mentioned earlier already uh, free float equals to tej means the earliest start time of the uh, tail event minus latest start time of the tail event minus uh, this total float that formula is called the free float and the third float is the independent float and it is defined as the excessive minimum time available over the required activity duration it is excessive of the minimum available time and it gives us idea about the excess time that exists if the preceding activity ends as late as possible means uh, the preceding activity ends lately but there must be the, if there is some excessive time then that time is called that that time is called independent float and the succeeding activity starts as early as possible and uh, the, we have al already provided i have already provided the you with the formula that is fid equals to ff free float minus slack slack of the tail event now we will move toward the uh, new type of float that is interfering float so let's have a look what is interfering float so here comes interfering float interfering float it is equal to the difference between a total float and the free float and the interfering floats formula is total float and free float once we have calculated the total float and free float we will be able to calculate the interfering float value easily and guys uh, here are some summaries of the float which we have uh, learned recently and that are total float free float independent float interfering float these formula are very important when you are asked to explain or write about different types of floats which are used in the cpm network but when uh, we will be solving this uh, cpm network numerical then i don't think that you will require this formula because i will help you to understand solve that numerical very easily in the uh, easiest math form so uh, now here we comes the critical activities and critical path and critical activities and critical path are basically determined on the basis of the value of the total float and here we go total float can be negative zero or positive means the total float value fluctuate between these three things 
the information about the activity degree of the total float is useful as regard of criticality of the activity means the once we, we one must have the idea about the value of the total float whether it is negative zero or positive in order to know the how critical the activity is the critical ca the act an activity can be critical in three ways that are super critical activity critical activity and sub critical activity and this is distinguished on the basis of the value of the total float when the float is ac float active float of the activity is negative such activity demands very special attention and action that activity is called super critical act negative means super critical activity again critical activity when the float is zero such activity demands above normal attention no freedom of action with no freedom of action then such activity is called critical activity and the third thing is sub critical activity when the float is positive demanding normal attention but allowing some degree of action some freedom of action then such activity is called sub critical activity now we have these were all about the cpm network now we will move to the difference between the cpm network and port network and that is very important from the exam point of view and uh, after that in the next lecture we will solve some numerical based upon the cpm network so let's learn about the difference between the cpm network and port network so here is the difference between cpm network and port network cpm network in cpm network time estimates for completion of activities are with fair degree of accuracy means time estimate for completion of and activity are with fair degree of accuracy as i already told you that cpm network is based upon the time and cost so it is necessary that the time estimates are with fair degree of accuracy in port time estimates are not so accurate and definite and uh, I, I at the beginning of this lecture i already also told you that uh, cpm network is used when fair degree of accuracy of time is required in that case we use cpm network C in cpm cost is the direct controlling factor already mentioned that cpm is time uh, related to time and cost so cpm is the in cpm cost is the direct controlling factor time is controlling factor in port network in cpm the critical path is determined on the on activity oriented float philosophy so uh, yes this is right that's in cpm network we we have we learned about the new concept that were about float total float which we, was used to determine the uh, criticality of the activity in port the critical path is determined on the event oriented slack philosophy we have learned about these things and it is suitable for repetitive type of project means cpm network is suitable for repetitive type of project and the fourth thing is it is suitable for the research and development project port network is suitable for research and development project this was all about the cpm network so i hope you enjoyed today's lecture on cpm network and uh, in the upcoming lecture i will discuss about a numerical which is based upon the cpm network so do subscribe the channel and if you are enjoying the content on civil learning on our channel then do like this video and share this video with your friend and uh, if you don't want to miss any updates then do subscribe this channel and then stay safe and take care of yourself